I think I'll just take some time talking about the end of the semester and the stuff. Make sure everything is clear. We know where we're going. It's very possible I made some mistakes. So for today, you had this article to read. Um, you didn't have to read all of it, but especially the first uh, one and a half pages and then the second column to the end. So that's another couple pages. So we will go over that. Then I have some outlines of some other articles just to give you um, a general view. So the previous class, um, well, the class on Sophia was about getting women to be at the forefront of sustainable development. And so then I read an article about all the ways that post-colonial, uh, post-colonialism, women and ecology. So this outline is very similar to the article that I had you read for today. So we can uh, talk a little bit about more, more about post-colonial if you want to, because it's so obvious to you. Plus this is deceiving the third world is also related to post-colonial. Um, I know that I read proposals for um, some really prestigious grant, Fulbright, and they were philosophy proposals. And the, the people writing the proposal wanted to go somewhere in the world. And it could be anywhere in the world. And of course, a wealthy country like the US ought to be sending people to developing countries. Um, but most of them, very few of them, were to developing countries out of 28, maybe five. <laughs> but the ones that were often were a very tiny elite of brainy people who were going to go and meet with another tiny isolated elite. And, and they were just going to reinforce colonialism. And then some of them were all, they thought they were so international because it was philosophy as a way of life, right? Boy, that's cool. And um, they were gonna go to Iceland or somewhere in Northern Europe. It's like, uh, hello. <laughs> and then every single book, every single book on the syllabus that the students would read was written by a privileged white Western male. And <laughs> it's just, you're brainwashing. It's just colonialism all over again. And I had to review them with a couple other people. And I was so angry. <laughs> so we sort of got into it, but we still had to decide, you know, who would move forward, but it's so ignorant. It's, and there's been so much done in post-colonialism, you know, this has been going on for decades. So besides being just common sense, I think because my parents um, were very internationally oriented, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking outside of Western white privileged men a long time ago. And I was noticing things about the myth of catching up development. You could just figure that out before the statistics ever came up, that that was what was happening, that was what was going to happen. And um, so I hope that you, one, one thing I want you to be able to do uh, is to be able to anticipate problems, right? So you can understand how everything's connected to everything. And you can start to, to understand that certain ideas are not going to work because they're too detached from human beings. Or um, anyway, you have to, you can't listen to propaganda, right? Political propaganda. 
one of the articles, the article for today said that no politician will ever, they just don't talk about telling their people to cut back on their fossil fuel consumption, especially in America. You cannot tell Americans or there's just this huge backlash. <laughs> I mean, you can't even tell Americans to get a COVID vaccine shot, right? But if you tell them they should get insulation in their house or they should get, uh, they should drive a, a lower carbon uh, emitting car or just anything, it's the government. This is socialism. This is authoritarianism. The government is trying to control my life. And it's just awful. And I hope that that doesn't happen in your countries. So I have to, I'm wondering if the same kind of things are happening in your countries. Um, so we can, we can think about that too. But ultimately, from a women's issues point of view, we talk about how this affects women, because women are affected disproportionately affected by climate change, by the myth of catching up development, by the external externalities of the West. We don't count in our cost benefit, in our idea of how much it costs to produce a product. We do not count the impact on the environment, especially if it's the impact on the environment in a developing country where the factories are um, far away from us. <laughs> and I, I apologize for this. I've always felt awful about this, but at least I can teach you and make you savvy. <laughs> and then I guess each of you can also talk about whether you think the people around you, your classmates, whether there is this you know, the culture around you really does idealize the West and want to have that standard of living. Um, I think the article today said that having a materially higher standard of living never makes people happier, but that's not true. If you're poor enough, getting into the middle class definitely makes a difference in your life. It's just if you have enough, having way more than you need, that doesn't make you happy. And Americans keep having to learn that lesson over and over again. <laughs> but um, anyway, so this is what we'll talk about today. Next time, okay, so you have two papers, right? You have one paper due on the, I think it's December 10th, the last day of finals. Um, and I'll check that for sure, but I don't, it's not, the grade is not gonna go lower if you hand it in a few hours late. So don't worry about that. But anyway, I want you to start working on a research paper for that's due on final week. It has 1,500 words, and it has three quotes at least. The quotes can be from what we read in the class, in which case you cite this, the date of the stream, the name of the attachment. If there's more information, you can cite the name of the article and the author. You should be able to do that. Um, and then, if it's an outside source, you should use probably APA because I think that's what you use in access and whatever. So you don't have to, I won't know the difference, but I would recommend that you use the citation type that, you are, that you're going to use in your other classes. So this one is about um, you, with uh, the next paper, you've talked about which goddesses inspire you, right? right? What kind of career you anticipate, right? You've already talked about that. 
in, in the other paper. Um, now you want to go further. Then you start um, looking at it within this context. Um, what organizations are focused? OK, so starting with the goddesses that inspire you or what kind of a career you anticipate. Um, you find out what organizations are focused on that and, and on women's equality and on sustainability, right? So if you think you're going to go into business, you can talk, uh, look up, right? What are the businesses that are focused on treating women equally? Sometimes the nature of the business is that, but sometimes it's just that um, the business has right up front that we hire most, you know, we want to be a women centered organization, or we make a point of treating women equally, or you can get information about are women treated equally overall in the business world. And then if you can cite information from your country, that would be best, right? So, and then also sustainability, which businesses are the product is, is a sustainable product, which businesses are re, restructuring the way they operate so that they're less carbon, so that they lower their carbon footprint. Um, you may also, you may wanna look up networks in your villages or locally in your region or national organizations, you can look up government and non-government, you can look regional or the United Nations, uh, find out opportunities that might be available to you or networks you can get connected to, right? It's just the beginning, just starting from uh, what you think you might want and you that we change our minds a lot, so don't worry. I just had an idea about something today and I contacted someone and they said, nope, that's not gonna work. So I'll try something else. Um, okay, Mahira, yep. So ma'am, uh, next is Tuesday, like November 23, we will bring an article and present it what it says. Next time, yep, yep. And uh, we don't have any other posts, right? You don't have any other readings. Okay, uh, ma'am. Do we have do we have further uh, like uh, any more presentation? Like you say, do we have formal presentation in our paper or something like that? Yes. Yeah, because you always do when you do a paper. So, what? That's the next day. That's the following a week from today. Is uh, your formal presentations on your goddess's paper, and then you you need. Uh, a PowerPoint for that too. Because you remember when Pooja and a few others gave a PowerPoint, I thought it was nice. And I- Like you know, uh, it's goddesses paper too. Like um, that one uh, deadline was 20 November, right? right? Yes, right. and the, the reason I'm not making you present on it this week is because there's always students that aren't finished. So I want to make sure everybody's finished. Does that make sense? Sometimes, yes. yeah, sometimes I ask for presentations, you know, just a few like, days after. Like you, you wrote your paper two, but uh, in the classwork, you wrote their paper three. So I am a little bit the confused. Goddess's about paper it. is paper two. And oh, okay, well, I mean, <laughs> all right. It, it, yeah, I mean, it should be kind of obvious that that was just yes, a typo, but okay. That, that's why it's so confusing. For, well, okay, uh, like, I mean, really, you shouldn't, you should be able to use your mind, right? You just- I'm, I'm Actually, I put paper three and submit it. I also submitted, but I am so confused about this like presentation. Like, yeah. Okay, so here's what it says. We're going to read something. We're going to look up an article related to your final paper, right? Then you're yes. going to present on your goddess's paper. 
right? Ma'am, in November 30, it will be paper two. You show, you wrote paper three. In the stream for paper two, where we submit, then, there it will be paper two. Okay. Finish paper three presentation, it's finish paper two presentation. And then for submitting paper two, there you wrote paper three. Well, okay. Um, all right, so then I go up to, let's see, classwork, you mean on classwork? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. so I'll do that. Um, this is paper two. Yes, paper two. Okay. Okay, and then the final paper. Okay. Um, I think you could have figured it out because it said you yeah, and the goddesses, right? Out. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. it's In not. Process, we understand. Okay, it's not too, you know, weird. It's the goddesses paper. So, I mean, yeah, you, can assume, you can assume that I can make a, a mistake on that, but all right, is that okay now? Is everything okay? I have also some confusion about the uh, post uh, 12, 13. Can you please explain sure. it? Well, it's the two readings for that day. So it's all the same. Global feminism and the excerpt. Um, and your own examples. So, um, okay, so I think with global feminism, I asked you, what did I say something in the stream? Let me see. Um, global feminism, read the chapter uh, or do some research Oh, either use your own experience or do research to find your own example and the ways they are addressed. Okay, so this would be, um, yeah. all right, so, um, uh, it probably should have said, um, I'll just say, let's see your actually your own reactions right your reactions before the class uh the um what you learned from others and your own examples right so again i don't know i don't know what the word excerpts was about but that's fine i i um, think okay is this one okay uh, can you take it uh, post -colonial? post colonial? So that was the usual. You have your three reactions before the class, your three reactions during the class, and then your own example, right? Yes. So they're all the same. So and eleven, <laughs> like I am confused about eleven, twelve, and thirteen. That's why uh, I can. Okay. 11, let's see, what is 11? Um, it says- We did Hestia, right? In the previous post, post 10, we did Hestia. Okay. Uh, 11 is just Sophia. Okay. That's, let's look and see. Um, I think the usual is to do, let's see. Uh, you know, you could easily be right. Let's see. Um, Examples of art. Uh, yes. Has the examples. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, again, then the next one would be examples of Sophia. works by Hestia women. But yeah, okay. So that's what we usually did, right? The first day was examples of women you know. And the second one was examples of women writers, right? Um, does that make sense, Delana? No, Mama, I'm oh. not too sure. Uh, okay. Can I say something? Sure. Yes. I think Hestia, we did uh, 10 in post 10. So now we will do uh, the Sophia, an example of women environmentalist we know yes, or in public life. That's I'm that. saying about it. Okay, so that's fine with me if you just do it that way. 
Okay, thank no, you for that. No, no, that's fine. I, um, I, you know, you could have written me. A, you could have written me. Um, These are all okay, right? Uh, right. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Then, Actually, I'll tell you the idea that was in my head. Right. You had you usually you have few, uh, two days, I think, where the first day is Aphrodite examples. Um, um, let's see. Second day, wait a sec. First day, all right. Then it was Aphrodite. First day is body mutilation, like. Right, but the first day was just about Aphrodite and examples of women you knew. And then the second one, was examples of art by and for women, right? So yeah. I tried to I split, this is where I would, you know, we were splitting them, examples of people you knew on Hestia and then examples of the kind of writing done by a woman who would be inspired by Hestia, but it's all right. You can cut it out. You don't have to do it. The people who turned it in, fine don't worry <coughs> um so let's see let me make sure everything's clear here then your reactions before class and what you learn from others and your own examples that that's okay isn't it yes so those readings okay and then post-colonial is um was last time your examples, okay. And then, and it, that's also, you know, what you, your reaction before class, your reactions do, during class and your examples. Then we have paper number two, um, 1400 words, three quote, quotes, um, citation. So I talked about that, okay. Is that, and then the next one, the final paper, let me make sure. Starting with the goddesses that inspire you, then you do, uh, and then you did talk about what career you might anticipate. And now you just take that further. Um, and then, like I, I said that before, so, okay. That's the next thing is just, um, and the model of the research paper, let me look at this. Um, I simplified it somewhat, um, why you chose this topic, right? Why you think it's important. Um, your main claim, your main claim might turn out to be that there's very little being done in the business world to, um, that focuses on women's equality or sustainability. And then you can, you know, give your data. Or your main claim might be um, the women in business is changing radically in the last 10 years in my country. And then you, you know, and so, um, and that would be what you found when you did your research. And that would be your main claim. So I don't know what your main claim is going to be, but it, needs to be related to those three things. What kind of job you anticipate? Well, could be four things. What kind of goddess you are? What kind of job you anticipate? What is, the, is that fec, uh, sector of society becoming more friendly to women and less gendered? And then is it moving towards sustainability, right? That would be and whatever conclusions you, you don't have to include all of it, but you start doing some research and you make your claim and it's going to be significant, right? Um, it's significant to know if women in business is becoming, is growing or if it's getting um, stopped, if there is a backlash against it, you could find out how much government is supporting women in business and how much it's not, or whatever it is you're studying, women in politics or women in the arts. Um, 
Let's see. And then the discussion, you just draw, describe the data, right? And whether it's qualitative or quantitative, okay. So discussion is what used to be literature review. I looked at a number of examples and you can call it literature review, you know, whatever, but that's what that is. And then you have your conclusions, recommendations moving forward, right? Um, so it's kind of anticipating you're, now you know where you're stepping in. What's the situation you're stepping into? And what do you anticipate being a contribution that you can make, that you can focus on? This does not mean this will actually pan out for you. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, life changes us a lot. And you know our paths don't turn out the way we thought. But it is learning how to think about what you... Um, what you anticipate so that when your life path changes, you can start with a different set of assumptions and you can do research and then you can, you know, create another path, another anticipate, another goal, uh, but you sort of know how to do it. So this is just sort of the pattern of how to do it in general. Um, okay, let's see. Now, I apologize for those mistakes. Uh, I wish somebody had told me right away. Truly, you know, I don't like to cause students grief. Um, they have so much already on their plate. But any other questions? Okay, so I think then um, I guess I'll just go through the outline here for a minute to refresh people's um, memory. I have a question. Someone asked that, do we have any final exam? What? Do we have any final exam? No, no. I'm a paper person. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, what okay. would I test you on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine, you know. Like uh, uh, our academic registry has already sent us the uh, like uh, schedule for final exam. That's why. <laughs> no, that's actually I looked that up, and um. We have only submission, right? Well, actually, I would like you to meet. We will meet during that final exam period, and then you'll give a presentation of, um, I guess you're already giving a presentation of your paper, so that's okay. What I want you to do on final week though, is have office hours with me, okay? Make sure to meet yeah. with me. That, that is, I'd like to require it, right? That you meet with me when you have an outline and you're ready to, um, you're ready to write it and I can maybe give you more ideas or more articles. Yeah. So I would like you to do that. Uh, I think it's this class where the final exam period is pretty early in the week. So you do not have to meet me during that final exam period because I don't think you will have gotten very far in your papers at that point. Um, but I will have the same office hours I usually have. And you will sometimes have a final during that time, but I don't, you won't every day. So I'll just be here, right? And I would like you to come when you're ready to think you can give a presentation on your paper and you're, you're ready for us to talk about it so I can give you some ideas or help you clarify your ideas. Okay. So after completing our uh, like uh, final paper, we have to give presentation, right? No, you hand that in the last day of finals. So when December you- December 9. What? December 9, that is the last day. Right, December 9th. Uh, you can you, 
Okay, Girl, you have to give you have to give um, a presentation on your. Um, let's see. You will discuss less formally your plans for your final papers, right? Because you aren't going to be very far along. But um, I do want you to, okay, on this one, you have to present one article, right? The research that you're heading toward. And then on Friday, on the, sorry, the final day of class, you have to give a less formal presentation. I basically, I'm just deciding today was the last day for additional reading. So you can start just working on your final paper and working on your presentation for your second paper so that it's a good presentation. You have time to do a good job and you have time to do a good paper. Is that all right with people? Any other questions? Okay. Ma'am, do less formal presentation on final paper require any PowerPoint? Ah, no, because that's a less formal one. No, you don't have to have a PowerPoint. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. That would be, you know, you that would be too hard. You wouldn't have enough time. Can you skip this? This one, like less formal presentation. What? Can we skip it for us, like uh, less formal presentation and final paper? Let's see. Skip what? It's a no. I think it would help you to prepare, you know, to get yourself focused. Um. Because, because we already have an idea about how to like uh, write a research paper. And uh, that's why I'm saying this. Dorona, you just uh, give your ideas. What are you going to write about from your sources? Just sum up your, what are you going to write? That is less formal presentation. Well, what I want you to think about, Dolana, is how everything is connected to everything else. And so when you give your, these presentations, then the rest of you can ask questions and we can see how everything is connected to everything. I think you learned that when we studied the goddesses, right? Each one, like you take Persephone and you take um, victimization and you think, gosh, there's so many dimensions to it, right? There's not just that you feel bad because your skin isn't white enough. It's FGM and it's rape and it's harassment and it's abuse and it's all this stuff. And so you can start to see that that alone has many dimensions. Then you have all the goddesses together. That's huge, right? Everything gets a lot more complicated. And so I just want you to learn how to think in terms of complexity because the world is complex and I think you'll be able to maneuver better in that world. And so this day, we will just try to brainstorm about how, what you're starting with, what else you can connect it with. And I, it would be nice if I can call on each of the other students and at least some of them, at least half of them will have ideas um, about what else you could do. As long as I'm not requiring extra reading, I think you know it's fair to have you come to class and talk about your ideas and your research and all of that. And also you each get to know each other and what you anticipate doing what kind of person you are, all that stuff. So that's that's the plan. Anybody else? I have to apologize. I am behind in my reading <laughs> of the post. So I am, I don't know. I don't know when some of you handed those in, but I might be behind, I don't know, three weeks for some of them. I don't 
think so. I think it's maybe two weeks. Um, but I, I don't know. I didn't have that many good reasons. I guess I was preparing a panel presentation I did this morning and I wanted it to be good. So, um, and it turned out nobody trashed me. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, people can get pretty, pretty feisty and picky if you, good luck guys. So anyway, um, let's go through this. Global advertising. This was, this would have been on that section related to the section on Persephone, where women are made to feel inferior. Um, but just in general, this article is about, uh, if, if any of you wanna read any of this stuff, you can, but it's just about global advertising in general and what a huge, huge, billions, trillions of dollars and how much damage it's doing. The way our economic systems have been set up. So I don't know if I said this, uh, the Glasgow summit, it just, it seems to me there wasn't as much excitement this time as there was in Paris because people are not following through on their promises. Uh, nations are not turning around. And then I found out that five, there were 500 lobbyists from the fossil fuel industries. And so they looked at it as a great opportunity. You have all these developing countries, the leaders right there, and they can just sit and make deals with those leaders for more fossil fuel extraction. They don't even have to fly to the, each country individually. This is easy. <laughs> Make a 10 o'clock appointment with one of them, 11 o'clock with the other. So I'm not sure what actually happened there. Um, the other thing is the way it's designed. A lot of rich people in the U.S. are getting richer by being sustainable or appearing to be sustainable, having a reputation for being sustainable. So I, I don't have illusions. I just know every day, you know, you have to be on the right side of history and you have to keep going. So you shouldn't be discouraged. All of you have a great life ahead of you, but um, the context is going to be pretty scary. Um, but the, all that means is somebody's got to be leading. Somebody's got to be um, helping those are, who are farther down in the food chain or more seriously influenced by climate change. Um, then he's talking about um, psychology, that people really psychologically, people are denying all sorts of psychic pain. They're splitting their mind and their body. They've got, it's not making people happy. The kind of level of consumption in the US, um, we have so much violence and escapism. We have a lot of escapism in our country. And, um, the article you read for today said that that's one of the prices of development as community. But the trouble is with women, especially, I think women, you just can't feel guilty about the fact that you're going to go and develop your, get an education, get a career, and then come back and um, contribute to the community and to the family. It'll be a different kind of contribution, um, but it will require you to be gone, right, from the community for periods of time. And um, so, so often women are the ones who suffer when people say we have to go back to community. <laughs> um, that, that shouldn't, it shouldn't be the burden of women to do that. Um, let's see, the idea of God, 
can be detached or it can be related to the earth. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's the here is the outline for the reading today. All the development strategies assume the good life. This was written in 1993, and I just I have these older articles because. I want you to know that this stuff has been going on for a long time and that um, it's, these aren't new ideas. It's just that the stakes keep getting higher. Um, and also people haven't learned. People didn't read this and change. Uh, maybe some people did, but uh, not enough. It's not the overall spirit of what's um, happening right now in the world. Um, let's see. The poverty of the underdeveloped nations is a direct consequence of the overdevelopment of the rich nations. Okay, we couldn't, my country couldn't be rich unless you were, you, we were exploiting your human resources, right? Underpaying you and also exploiting your natural resources. And I've known this since I was 12. I mean, that's, <laughs> or 14, 15, that was about when I really woke up about 52 years ago. And I started thinking a lot about this stuff. Um, so um, all these relationships are colonial. The rich achieve it by denying and abusing the less privileged. It happens between the North and the South. It happens between men and women. It happens between urban areas and rural areas. So the place that I taught for the last 25 years is a rural area in the South of the US, which is poorer than the North. And that's where all the military that we get most of our military from the South, from rural and poor people, because it's a great career opportunity for them. But then they go and fight for uh, wars for oil in Iraq. So the people who sent them there are making tons of money on the war. So that's a, definitely a kind of colonialism right within my country. Then there's um, the way that women are colonized, they do all sorts of unpaid labor. So their labor is exploited. Um, and what you have to think about is, have, have you been brainwashed, right? So her solution is just for the colonized people to say, no, we're not gonna buy into this. Um, so you can think about it in terms of your communities or your families or also your peers, right? Whenever they decide they have to look like a Western movie star, they've really bought into it, right? They've been brainwashed. And um, that's what you should, you know, make sure you don't go that way. And then also try to talk people out of it. Just try to point out the overall cost, like the context of what's going on. It's not just about you and what you want to look like. It's this huge system of manipulating you, getting you to care about certain things, ignore other things. So the colonized need to develop their own sense of identity, right? Um, the people and the deterioration of nature, the worst thing there, I don't know if you, how much you know, but Westerners will go to, especially Africa, and they'll go on these safaris where the African natural resources are put into these parks, right? They're either national parks or private parks so that Americans could go and shoot these exotic animals and take them home and stuff them. And it's just, it's so awful, right? It's exploiting nature. It's your identity. I'm a real man. I can go shoot a gazelle and get it stuffed and put it in my study. I mean, I, 
my college is called Lyon College. And Mr. Lyon, the rich guy who gave the money, I went to his house for a party and he has one room that has three African animals stuffed in the room. Oh gosh. And it's just, uh, it's, it's colonialism, you know, in spades. Um, people in Af, but he would, it would never occur to him, right? Ever occur to him. He just said, I can afford it. I'm spending my money in Africa. They should be grateful. I'm helping them get jobs. Um, and then the, a lot of the people that work with wealthy Westerners, they, they do want to get wealthy, right? They've bought into it. The, the blind hope that the colonized can catch up. But you know how this goes, you know? First, everybody wants a TV, then they want a color TV, then they want a computer, then they want an iPhone, then they want a, you know, number 10 iPhone or whatever. It never stops. Um, so everyone has to decide at what point they're just going to say that's enough. Um, the economic reason, okay, externalizing costs is a really big deal. We do not, what I pay for, for products made elsewhere does not include the cost to the environment of those, um, of the natural resources in those countries. Um, catching up is impossible. Okay. Um, how do you measure the quality of life? The size of the economy is not a good measure. You have to have distribution. How is that money distributed? Um, let's see. You can't, okay, exploit external colonies. Um, yeah, there was an example where these rulers were at a conference and they never, they kept telling their people, yes, they can have greater affluence. That's their goal. Because a political leader can never tell people, you know, you have to use less water. You have to, <laughs> they would never get reelected. So how are you going to be able to solve this problem without people wanting to be told? that they need to be on a lower carbon footprint. But, um, oh, here's another thing that's important. Because uh, economic developing, development is, is failing, people are getting afraid, and then they have to find someone to blame. And so politicians will try to find a scapegoat. And you all know better than I do uh, in your countries, if there's some minority that's getting scapegoated. Um, and then fundamentalism is growing. Uh, you know that as you know better than I do in each of your countries. Nationalism is growing. It's growing in the US, that's very obvious. It's just that in other countries, people are even more on the edge. And so um, it's growing there too. Um, Okay. Oh, and the other part was it's hard on women. Women especially suffer for this. Oh, okay. So, well, maybe I'll, I'll just, inc I'll talk a little bit about the section on women in the article. It was toward the end. Because maybe, maybe you already know this, or it's no surprise, but does it help women? Um, let's see, so let's go, equality is, is always based on money. And of course, women don't have money <laughs> compared to men. So it's always much more about men. Self-determination and freedom are limited for women because they're treated as commodities because um, even, okay, we talked about this, even if they have money, they don't have any say in what's offered on the market, like pants without pockets, so they have to buy purses, and you remember that stuff we covered about the 
the marketplace and women. Their own desires and needs are constantly manipulated or they're ignored or they're restructured. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, here's another important thing that women in the developed world depend on the exploitation of women in the developing world. So for example, the garment industry, this is a good example. So when I came to Bangladesh the first time, I like fabrics. I used to sew, I'm really sensitive to um, uh, style, you know, design. I love um, batik, I love, um, you know, the usual thing that Westerners like. <laughs> Sorry about that, very stereotype, but it's a huge market, right? All over the world. The trouble is, the question is, how should I, should I buy these garments? Because I know on the one hand, the industry, the salaries are so horrible. We talked about that. The working conditions are horrible. Um, but, you know, should I not buy it at all? And then they don't sell or should I buy it, but the conditions don't get any better. Well, then if the wages did get better for the women in the developing countries, then the women in the developed countries wouldn't be able to afford buying as many, right? So they wouldn't buy as many. And so women in the, in the industry would get paid more, but not as much many garments are being sold so many of them wouldn't be able to work at all. They would get laid off from their jobs. So that, that's a terrible syndrome. But I mean, that's, that's, she's saying that that's the way the whole system's set up. It's antagonistic. It's not designed so that there's everybody wins. It's designed so that the rich people have, have complete control. <laughs> they can win and everybody else loses. Um, let's see. Okay, and then there's the ecological stuff. Uh, and mothers, oh yeah, that other example of mothers in Germany where there was, um, the milk was poisoned. So they were only supposed to nurse for no more than three months. So this woman in Germany finds out about millet. It contains all the nutrients an infant needs. So this Ragi should be, so she wants Germans to go tell people in India, oh, we will buy all this Ragi and it will give you business and, you know, it will grow your economy and it will be great. But the truth is the women who live there and use it, uh, it's free, right? It's a subsistence food. As soon as German women want it, the price goes way up and they can't afford it. And so they, you know, the poorest women probably won't get jobs in the factories that make it. Somebody will. And then the women who were using it to feed their children no longer have good food for their kids. They might then have to buy processed baby food <laughs> that, you know, is processed by some American company that ends up, they have to spend way more money for their baby food and the profits go to a U.S. corporation rather than just having it grow naturally where they are and it's very cheap or free. So, but the German people think, oh, wow, we're really helping the people in India. We're helping those poor people by buying one of their products and won't they be happy? Their gross national product will go up. Their politicians will be able to say, you see, I'm helping to grow the economy. <laughs> All right, so this is called critical thinking, right guys? Um, so each of you should have some sort of reaction. Um, I talked a lot, so I'm sorry, but go ahead, Fayaza. Fayaza? Okay, Melanie. 
Um, so I'm writing an essay on like women and childcare and the prices of childcare. And I'm looking into like the statistics of um, the price of childcare compared to the income of women or just families in general. And um, it's crazy how the higher your income is, the higher your use of childcare is because it is so expensive. And the government still doesn't give subsidies or dividends on the child in childcare. So the low income families aren't getting any help, you know, leaving them at the bottom and keeping the childcare market up at the top being run by the rich people. And something else that I thought was worth mentioning is the jobs like here in the US, like welding, electricians, carpentry, they all pay hourly wages like super high. It's they're really good paying jobs, but women can't get those jobs. They don't really hire women for those jobs. So the jobs that um, women do get, even in businesses, they they still don't compare to the pay that men receive in those jobs. Yeah, this is in the U.S., right? This is the yes. developed country. Okay, actually, Melanie, this week the Build Back Better bill is going through, and it does have uh, universal pre-K. Um, but it, if it gets through, it's just barely. So the U.S. capitalism has made it very difficult for women um, and women who have lower class jobs cannot afford childcare. And so they can't afford to work, you know? <laughs> and then they get called lazy if they don't work. It's, it's crazy, Melanie, it's crazy. Um, uh, Trin. Yes, Professor. Um, so we 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 are give the reaction about the. Uh, yes, uh, your reaction. Something from the reading. It doesn't have to be anything I mentioned. You can. Um. Yes. Okay. So, I think after I'm reading, finish reading the catching up development from, um, uh, Mary Amis. So I, I I can't understand why she mentioned it. It's just indicate myth. Do you hear me clearly, Professor? Why she called it a myth? Yes, because that she knows evidence of shifting the desire go uh, between the affluent countries and the poor countries. She just means it's false, right? Yes. The idea that the poor countries are ever going to catch up, they're not going to catch yeah. up. Yeah, they, they cannot catch up to the affluent societies. And yeah, that's why I think, no desire to go about that. And I, I, think, I think her writing is us really well crowded. Um, yeah. Did you, do you think where you live, people do believe that they're going to catch up or they believe that they have to try and be as much like the West as possible in order to just have a flourishing economy? Or what do you think, what do people you know think? Or what do your politicians say or whatever? I strong, I strongly believe that just ultimately, or ultimately, only an egalitarian society can really offer us a good life. I didn't quite get that, but so you're, do people say your own society can offer a good life or becoming more Western can offer a good life? Uh, just, just uh, you know, just like uh, um, the term catch up for once, but not like you know following the un the develop the developed nations kind of that. Okay, all right. 
um, Mahira, what have you got? Like, ma'am, in our country, Bangladesh, I, when I read about this, I did, I felt it normal because everything was like uh, happens in my country. Like, if the women are in same jo job but not same payment, uh, and if they are from ethnic minority, then they don't give get any decent jobs. Like, they are like helpers in parlors, beauty parlors, or something like the small jobs, and then. And um, then the bourgeoisie and proletariat type of thing that they suck out the work out of them, but they don't get equal pay. And then uh, the price of daily materials, the women are not, uh, many women are not financially independent. So, uh, so they, um, they have to suffer for, uh, from high price things and they can't buy it because they have to ask for their male family members. Yeah, okay. Was there anything different in this article that you hadn't thought of before? Like most of the things were similar and uh, like what happens in Bangladesh. Okay. Especially the garment industry, but you know, in Bangladesh, it's notorious. Right? Oh yeah, garment industry. They treat them as like they don't have uh, any life. They don't have time to breathe. Work, 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 and meet the target. My grandfather also have a garment industry, but he treats every worker as equal. And every worker, like my grandfather, is the chairman of that garment industry. That every worker can sit in her sit is in his room and talk about daily life. And he's like very liberal. He arranges many functions for them and like the party also work, everything. So in, in that case, I found difference that uh, from other garments industry, what I heard from many people and from my grandfather's. Okay. Yeah, but so it happens. When, okay, so when I come to Bangladesh, I wanna buy some clothes, but I'll either your, be your grandfather's or else there's a woman on the board of the AUW that also, I think, does the garment industry. And I think she does it in a, a women's equal way. So I'll just have to be picky about which companies, right? Mahira, does that make sense? You'll have to tell me who your grandfather's company was. Yeah, yeah. I will send it for you. What the name of the product is, okay? Because I really didn't know what to do. Um, Maz Marzia. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, professor, uh, yeah, like uh, this article uh, is somehow somehow not read, mostly related to according to my country, like uh, in our country also, like the people who are in power or the people who are rich, so uh, they are somehow taking uh, the most uh, uh, income, the most money or incomes that comes in their control, but the poor people are uh, cannot get that. And also like uh, uh, in Afghanistan, like minorities cannot get the job that the other people cannot. Even uh, like politically, it is somehow organized that from which ethnic group uh, should have uh, these jobs, these chairs, or or be work in these um, positions, or these ethnic group should work at these positions. Like uh, totally, the base is the basement of the government. Like right now, I do not call it government because there is no government. I do not believe that. But before, like the people were, uh, like the people were. Uh, Totally, the, the from the base, it was like chairs. The positions were divided. Who should take this chair? For example, in Afghanistan, Hazara people, uh, it is somehow believed that we cannot be president because they are minority, uh, or they cannot be the minister of uh, defense because, uh, like, uh, uh, they it is somehow like. Uh, they were, if they have the ability, they, were, they are not allowed. Uh, so uh, in, even in economical positions, and also uh, for the women, I think the situation is even worse. 
and for the women, it's not about the ethnicity, it's about their gender. They are uh, criticized by their gender from in every position, they cannot take it easily. So, uh, uh, and also, but about uh, like, uh, about the Western belief that uh, uh, like their economical uh, level, like uh, as you have mentioned in the beginning that uh, in our country that girls want to live in USA or their uh, economical is, how does it looks for them? Like uh, recently, like uh, I came to Bangladesh, like some of my friends say, uh, how lucky your friends are that right now they are in USA and these things. So uh, yeah, like people believe that US, uh, US system, like US economical system support, everything is really good for women. So they, they get it as a privilege to live in USA. Yeah, that's where I'm saying that I don't agree with her that it's not at all beneficial. Like you've got to get up into the middle class, right? To yeah. go from really below up. Yeah, so it is good for those women to be in the US. They're going to have a better standard of life. But, um, but after a certain level, once you get what you need, to obsess about never having enough. And um, Americans can get violent. They can be obsessed about the next purchase. They can get depressed when they can't keep up with other people. And it's all just, that is socially constructed. That's not based on need, but just getting what you need so you don't have to worry about where the next meal is coming from Definitely, you know, um, let's see. Does that make sense, Marzia? Yes, yeah, Professor, yeah. Uh, no, there's no final exam. What would I test you on? <laughs> I just, I don't know what, how I would do a test, but I never do tests. It's always papers. And I think I gave you enough work to do anyway, don't you? I think you have enough to do. Uh, Roshani? Okay, good morning. <laughs> uh, for this topic and reading, I think I uh, somehow connected it in the last class also regarding the colonization and influence of Western um, cultural and other things in the Eastern societies. And uh, I feel it's, it's strongly rooted, like the Western thing or Western um, colonial or Western uh, cultural thing. Everything are like, deeply rooted in the Easterners people right now, nowadays. And many generali generalizations have been made regarding that um, by the people and by the people of like both the uh, areas, I would say, because um, the women, uh, it is generally said or, you know, seen that the women who are well-dressed um, and uh, who are, who wear some kinds of jeans or some kinds of, uh, some sorts of, you know, bold kind of dresses, uh, go out for hanging, partying and have a free kind of living lifestyle. She is often regarded as, okay, she is very bold. She is very maybe empowered. She is maybe very, uh, you know, uh, very clear on her thoughts, maybe very empowered kind of person. Whereas the women who uh, from uh, remote places, uh, who is self-disciplined, who returns her home uh, like on timely, um, you know who is very uh, who we, who does her work in a very disciplined manner. She, people think that maybe she is poor or maybe she doesn't know the maybe she is not empowered. Maybe she is bounded with so many things and so on, so on. So these things comes along. So which is something wrong myth that even the people of even the women of remote areas actually can be empowered though they don't show it by accepting the Western culture, Western lifestyle. So uh, this is the thing, and Professor, recently I have, a, I had actually a story, not a story, incident that few weeks back, uh, I went uh, to one of my sister's 
place uh, for baby shower. So it's actually a Western culture to have a baby shower, right? Uh, and um, it's a very nice. I love the celebration. I love uh, the womanhood uh, celebration. I love everything regarding that. And it was me, like it was us who actually planned it and had uh, thought of this celebration thing. But uh, while returning, I was like, um, we are focusing or we are emphasizing uh, the celebration thing uh, from the Western culture. Like we have our own kind of celebration thing. We have our own um, way of, way, we, are, we have our own way of celebrating motherhood, way of celebrating the, um, you know, pregnancy thing. But then why we only focus those things because of the glamour balloons, because of the like, classy thing but uh, we the same thing we have something like religious cultural thing uh, to celebrate um, mothers but we don't do it because we feel like okay we might be we might seem as a primitive while as the westerner things is always modern so these things have something uh, led our society to some in bad ex, uh, in bad uh, in some uh, extent and um, observing so many things now I, I have so many like um things to say that uh, the cultural because you know uh, like uh, this time i have been staying in Nip uh, nepal for like two years and i have closely observed so many festivals rituals deeply from my home and i feel sometimes i feel like our own kind of uh, our own religion uh, i'm not religious our own cultural and our own way of celebrating like our own uh, uh, thing is disappearing day by day whereas we are accepting the western things uh, so fast like we are all looking for the uh, classy hi-fi western modern we are all want to be a modern but if we do something of our own culture then we feel like we are going uh, to a primitive life or we have an ancient thought and so on so on which is something I really don't like, Professor. Right. So this is something I have observed. And I think these things are um, uh, influencing with Easterners, the Western thing, and the mindset that Western are always modern and Western are always up to date of the world activities is such a bad myth. And uh, women are also like following the same, that their mentality is that, that women who are bold are i mean not bold by uh, bold by their you know appearance and everything are uh, modern and <laughs> others are not yeah and then they'll actually then they'll start getting blamed you know yeah. covid like god is bringing covid because women are being too feminist or something <laughs> <laughs> right i mean yeah it's funny until it's not funny when people really believe that, and then there's a backlash, you know? So I hope you can find a way to balance those things out. Um, if you remember that quote, I can put the attachment on again, where this British officer came to Indy, said this is a very amazing culture. There's people are really nice and harmonized and all this, and we're gonna have to destroy it. And we're gonna have to make them feel inferior in order to conquer them so and that was hindu so you could just keep that in mind right that that was the backdrop and um it was and then they one way to demonize was to call it a religion and it's not it's a way of life um but anyway good luck roshani it's 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 tricky <laughs> uh dolana what would you what would you like to say? Okay, ma'am. Uh, I want to say that uh, uh, the reading is quite, uh, like when I read this uh, uh, passage, I found uh, something normal to our country because uh, like, I know our country is a developing country and uh, uh, most of the like uh, mostly in the like <clears throat> garments uh, factory uh, women are like uh, uh, 
women are suffered for their job and uh, like uh, they are though women and men are doing the same job but they don't get the same salary and this is the discrimination uh, on women and also they are like uh, they don't have enough time to like uh, time to take lunch or they have to work for our for uh, um, hours uh, uh, and late night and it's also sometimes they are like getting violated by the others uh, um, like men and uh, uh, and yeah. also another thing people are from ethnic group they are also suffered uh, and they don't get enough opportunity to getting a job or uh, um, like uh, same uh, our uh, like uh, majority people uh, like uh, they are like lagging behind and uh, for uh, to like remove to reduce this uh, discrimination our government uh, has started the quota system for the ethnic people in the government uh, job sectors uh, and uh, okay so i think i think this is quite normal for our country okay good um uh, I'm wondering, are those factories also really hot? Do they not have air conditioning? Um, I would wonder. Um, Toma? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as Dulna said, um, when I uh, studied the, these articles, so I also find uh, many things normal, which is happening in our country like Bangladesh. Like um, I saw in our country, um, the people who are uh, like the women who are uh, coming in higher class backgrounds, they get very easily some job opportunities in some higher um, sectors and the women who are um, belongs in the lower class background so they do not get the job opportunities and also the equalities in any other staffs and they need to suffer a lot of the things like material and financial things um, and uh, because of their uh, notice um, less uh, demandable things they they are uh, they need their uh, family and their children are also suffer uh, they do not uh, give their children uh, uh, fulfill their material things and also uh, their family needs and um, uh, so i think these things are similar with that article i found in my country okay um all right um amina Amina? Okay. Um, Bristi. Yeah, Professor, good morning. Hi. Yeah, so uh, after reading this, I said, uh, we said uh, I realized that uh, yeah, for job opportunities, I mean, a woman has to face uh, a lot of problems in our country. Because uh, I saw that, uh, I mean, my auntie is a teacher uh, of a pre-primary school, and if for any reason, I mean, uh, she uh, has to, I mean, miss a class, or I mean, for attending any program, or uh, sometimes for any family problem, then I'm mean, uh, in a higher position and in their office. Uh, there are so many I mean, men working uh, on, the, on the office. So uh, if she, I mean, miss a class, then they, I mean, cut off her salary. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, she got a I mean, less uh, amount of salary. And also when she miss and then they cut off their salary. So she has to, I mean, quarrel with them for this 
because it's not a rule, right? Okay. I mean, whenever it's an uh, emergency, I mean, she has to miss her classes. And also, I mean, uh, she has also, I mean, make her class on holiday. So, I mean, it's not, it's not fair. Right. Okay. I think, yeah, like this in Bangladesh, it's going on. Okay. I'm going to, I have eight people in 15 minutes. So, okay. Um, Janisa, is that you? Janifa, sorry, Janifa. Are you there? Okay. Kasturi. Uh, yeah. So, Professor, I, uh, I would like to add up to what uh, Rosniti was talking about. Uh, actually, it is very true that uh, we Nepalese are losing our culture these days a lot and tradition as well because we have been influenced a lot by the Western culture. Uh, so uh, most of the, I mean, I think that uh, more than 50% of the total area of uh, our country is occupied by rural uh, villages and areas. And uh, whenever we go to these places these days, we often find um, people uh, uh, wearing dresses that are uh, made in Western countries and not in Nepal. And we know that Nepal is a country with diversity, but then uh, it not, it's not necessary that uh, being a diversity country uh, mean that we have to be influenced by other countries because uh, if we um, start becoming influenced by the um, culture of other countries, then it will be very difficult for us to catch up uh, for the development, I guess. Uh, it's also that uh, the politicians in the country, they are not very loyal and faithful, meaning that uh, uh, at the present scenario, I can see that uh, the politicians, they are just uh, focusing on their own well-being and not for the uh, welfare of the state. Uh, because of the uh, influence from uh, Hollywood and Bollywood movies, uh, a lot of social problems and evils are taking place in the country. I mean, I just went uh, through a news recently where it uh, says that uh, a, a boy of 23 years old, he got killed by around 10 boys from uh, the place near to his village. And uh, so he, he has actually been killed uh, in a way that an actor in a Bollywood movie called Raj, R. Rajkumar has been killed. And so I think that uh, it's, it's not good to be influenced by the culture of other, um, other countries, because like uh, if we, uh, it's, it's like uh, if we lose one person because of uh, the influence of other culture, then uh, it is obvious that the present generation and the future generation, they are going to learn the same thing. And because of this, we will lose our own original and typical culture. And that is a very sad thing for me. Okay. Okay. Yes, Professor. Um, Sada. Actually, I don't, I think it's capitalism. There is no culture to capitalism. It's just about money. So it, it's not so much you're losing your culture to another culture, you're losing it to capitalism. Does that make sense, Kasturi? Uh, yes, Professor. Yeah, because Bollywood isn't exactly Indian culture. <laughs> you know, India's got a lot of culture. It's, Bollywood is capitalism, money. Um, Sada. Do you have something, Soda? Okay. Um, Jacinta? Yes, Professor. Um, so in my country, the politicians, people have many powers. And uh, for example, like uh, uh, in public job sector, 
before exam they select the politician people select their relatives um, uh, to uh, to get the job and they arrange the exam um, but there uh, uh, there has no hope for middle class and poor class of, uh, 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 students to get the uh, public sector job because before exam they uh, they have power to choose their relatives and they choose their relatives they don't uh, allow uh, allow others but they arrange the exam uh, to uh, by registry uh, that they can and uh, uh, get money they can earn money from a registration from students registration uh, then another is uh, factories uh, uh, in garments factories uh, and the uh, the um, the administration uh, 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 gives hopes uh, uh, the workers that uh, workers uh, 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 will uh, join their their garments uh, more and more uh, before uh, or uh, uh, before going their job, they uh, uh, gives hopes to workers to uh, join uh, their factories uh, for their profit. Um, but after then, they don't. Uh, um, uh, they even don't uh, give enough. Uh, 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 pay, they don't give their payment. So uh, it's uh, very hard working, uh, uh, hard touching that. Uh, uh, they are getting uh, um, uh, discrimination. So that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's the way that that's the way capitalism works. You're always making a colony. So the North makes the South into its doing its dirty work within a country. You know, the men make the women, and then the upper class make the middle class and lower class. Right, it's antagonistic instead of people lifting each other up, right? So, Habiba. Yes, Professor. Do you have okay, something? Uh, yes. Okay, after reading uh, this paper, I feel like a little bit sad because uh, as I am not seeing uh, that much gender equality in my country, Myanmar. Uh, uh, women have been like uh, particularly uh, uh, powerless uh, in the cultural life. Uh, in the substantial uh, development, uh, and there are, discrim uh, there are discrimination laws and towards women, and also uh, providing equal access to education uh, opportunity for employment, like uh, to male. Also, women in Myanmar remain uh, e economically disempowered and uh, under uh, unrepresented in the workforce and uh, at in every level of government. Uh, so the work uh, the work in the workforce participation rate uh, for women, like if they are if uh, male participation like uh, 80 83 percent, women participation like maybe 55 percent. Uh, so the the low level of uh, female participation in, in Myanmar, so there is so much this discrimination in, right. in height. Myanmar also has a lot of environmental problems, I think, doesn't it? Right. And um, I think they have problems with um, nationalism and oppression of minorities and yeah. yeah. Also, uh, uh, so they're, you know, blaming their scapegoating, which will happen, yeah, yeah when a country- There's so much discrimination going and also a lot of problems are going there. This. Yeah, so I hope when you read the articles, when it says fanaticism and nationalism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. I want it's you led, to- It's led me to think about there. Okay, good. Um, Sadia. Sadia? Okay. Um, Fayaza, are you able to, to do it? Yes, Professor. Okay. Yes, Professor. Okay, go ahead. 
Yeah, professor. Yeah, in their article, uh, like it's uh, for like it's also happening in Bangladesh, so it's related in Bangladesh culture, the government's company and the other. So I agree with the other batchmen's like who are living in the Bangladesh. They are also know about the what's happening in Bangladesh. Okay, um, Fayaza, are you there? Uh, yes, professor. Mm, professor, uh, moreover, my views when I was uh, read that article, I just uh, found like in Sri Lanka, I just compare with that. So in Sri Lanka, like um, mostly discrimination for the minority people, it's regarding uh, why is the minority and gender. So if we take a look at the uh, gender, that will be like some specific jobs that offer for the like uh, only male male males right so like uh, it's me like the higher positions are they uh, it should be a man uh, the like the lower positions it should be a woman like that is this uh, like uh, i don't know like that is the uh, structure of the natural or uh, they like uh, the masculinity community creating that structure right um, socially constructed yeah yes professor. i hope I all of you know that um, I'm trying to get you very aware that you're going to be one of those very rare women, you know, that gets up closer to the top, right? So you you have this opportunity now to be leaders. That's why I want you to, you know, think about it, um, take it seriously. It is a big problem. Like you might become a woman that you've never seen before, right? You've never uh, met personally or been in contact with somebody who is at a level that you become when you are in midlife. Um, you can read about them and look at them online, but in your own context, you might be completely inventing something. Um, I know that I didn't know any women philosophers and I didn't know any mothers. <laughs> and I, I didn't think it was a big deal until I realized that nobody in at my work in my profession ever spent any time taking care of children and then you realize you know you're carving out a new cultural space and it's hard it's harder than you might think but just stick with it you know you're carving out a new cultural space it's important um kaula okay soda uh, okay, Sauda's writing. She got similarities in Bangladesh, um, school, college, job, women get less respect. Um, even if they do the job, they get less opportunities, less salary. Um, the problem is gonna be when there's a backlash, when they literally start, there starts to be violence uh, against women or there start, you know, that can happen. Um, the other problem is when privileged women start acting like machismo men and they just get greedy and they get violent. This is happening in my country. There's some women politicians that are just really, really uh, super um, masculine trying to outbeat the men. It's terrible. So Kaula, are you there? Okay, so we're we're pretty much done, uh, and I'll stay after. And I appreciate people pointing out the mistakes that I made, and I apologize if I cause people grief, because I don't like giving students stress. The other thing is, remember, you have to do ten posts. You don't have to do all the posts. You just have to do ten, and that I have a little grade book, and it will show. You know, it'll be easy for me to find out. If you don't do 10, then I just add up the numbers and divide by 10. And so it makes a lot of difference, right? Because most of you score at least 70 on a post. And so your average would be seven points less if you miss one. So I would hope you would get those 10 done. Uh, Jacinta? Yes, Professor, if someone finished uh, uh, 
uh, um, um, like uh, Boston, uh, she needs uh, to do uh, uh, as uh, assignment uh, post 11, 12, 13. No, no, you can do, you can skip one, two, and three. Just do 10 total, doesn't matter which ones. Okay. And if anyone does 13, <laughs> what? And in, if anyone does 11, 12, 13, all? Well, you could if, no, I, I actually am going to only average 10. So if you had a low one and you did an 11th one, I would throw out the lowest score. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because I don't, again, I, I'm going to have a lot of them to read. There's a lot of students behind. So, um, Mazir, Marzia? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, so if we have to do only 10 posts, so if we do all 13 posts, and uh, is it possible for you that you just count those 10 with higher scores? If you do what? If we do all the 13 posts. No, uh, actually, I don't, I don't want to have to do that because then I'd end up reading, you know, I'd have way too much to read. So uh, you can, you, if you got one score lower, I can read one extra one and throw out that lower one. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, Professor. I just uh, wanted to say that if I, for example, I have three lower posts, then if I instead do uh, 11, 12, and 13, will you count the, the next three other posts or no? You will not. Well, I think, I think I'll count one of them. Otherwise, I mean, I like reading them and all that, but I just know that it's going to get to be like okay, last semester, there were 80 of them. <laughs> so I guess I'll do one, right? You okay. can redo one. You can do one extra one and I'll throw out the lowest one. Does that make sense? Okay, Professor. Yeah, I yeah, got that. Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, everyone can go. It's time. People have to go. But if I'll stay for any questions, I hope I clarified things. I appreciate, Dolana, that you brought up all that. Um, okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. See you. Uh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. So, Professor, uh, I have a question like, uh, then the 10 post except the final papers, right? No, the, the 10 posts and the three papers. Three papers. Okay, Professor. Thank you. Sure. He grew up. Hmm. I know a lot of, well, yeah, philosophy is blood sport. He didn't grow up. Okay. Janifa, are you there? 